Okay, today we're going to look at winterizing the J Feather Micro 171BH. The other micros, you might see some similarities here. First thing is we're going to turn the water pump on. I've already winterized, so I can't exactly do everything. Parked in a weird parking lot, forgive me. I'm going to go around to the driver's side and we're going to open all the outside drains. I'm not including the sewer vents. So down here, there's a red and a blue and then the clear. So just take and twist those knobs. Like I said, I've already done this, so leave them on and then your water tank opens with this valve when it's in this position it's open so that means it's draining if there was fluid in there so leave those open until there's no more water coming out and you hear your water pump running dry once that happens close these back up you can leave this one open And then we're going to go back inside. Oh, crazy camera. <clears throat> okay. We're going to turn the water pump off now. And then we are going to look at the water heater. Oh. So we're just turning off the water pump and we're going back outside. Take a look at your water heater here. Take the cover off just like that. In here you have the pressure relief valve and then your anode rod goes in right there. So what you're gonna do is open this slowly to make sure there isn't any pressure. Like I said, do that very slowly. And then we're gonna remove the anode rod. I've already done that here. Uh, it's a pretty big socket I use on a ratchet. Um, I can tell you what size it is in a minute. And then we're gonna go find the water heater. Okay, back in the camper. My water heater is under the bed. I've got it propped up there. There's this panel that covers it. One screw held it down. Take that screw up, then you can lift the panel right out. As you can see down inside there, there is two valves. And the way they're turned right now, the water heater is bypassed. So basically, any fluids are gonna go through this hose and into the other line instead of going into the water heater tank. So that's, that's summertime, so to speak, and that's winterized. Same on the bottom one. So this would be a good time to make a note somewhere black sharpie whatever that direction is bypass that direction is summer so once you've got both those valves turned then we are going to find the t-valve besides the water pump let's see if i can put this down crazy wide angle Okay, so now you can see this T-valve. Basically the water from the tank, freshwater tank, is coming in through here. 
going into here during the normal times. When you're doing the winter, um, sorry, when you're winterizing, you switch the valve to this direction so that it's going to pull liquid from this hose. Your hose might not be clear, it might be a little different, but that's the one in my case. So, summer, winterize. Again, it's a good time to get a Sharpie, make a note of that. So, up is winterize, down is for fresh water. And all that's doing is making the antifreeze go into the water pump and then out to all your lines. So, at this point, we're ready for the antifreeze. And I apologize, I don't have an empty jug since I've already done this, but this is the time when you're going to take this hose and put this directly into the jug. I sat my jug right there, and I sat another jug right there, so I could just switch them when one was empty. So, open your jug, stick that in all the way, and then we are going to turn on the water pump. So, we're going to turn on the water pump right there like I said I've already done this so mine's not gonna do much except make noise so what will happen is the, it'll either keep running like that and gurgling or it will prime the system and shut off um, I've had it happen both ways either way is fine once that pump is running then in no particular order, you can start opening your faucets. What I do is I do hot first until I see pink. Then I go to cold. I do cold until I see pink. And then do enough so that the P-trap is filled up, if there is a P-trap. Uh, this one, I believe, does. There's going to be too much stuff in here, but yeah, there you can see a P-trap. So figure about a cup or eight ounces, um, probably gonna fill that. So picture enough to fill three quarters or half of your coffee mug and let that down in there. Then we're gonna go to the shower. And what I did is I turned this all the way up for hot, ran it, and then as low as it could just for cold while it still came out and then shut it off again i did enough just in case there's a p-trap down there i don't know for sure if there is on the shower or not same with the bathroom run your hot until pink comes out run your cold until pink comes out and then make sure you do enough to fill the p-trap if there is one I don't know what's down here. Maybe we can look. Yep, this one has a P-trap. So again, picture three quarters or a full coffee mug. And then do your toilet. Just put that, push down that flush valve until pink starts running out. And then close it. Once you got pink, you're good. So at this point, if you have any other faucets or sinks inside, do them. And then we're going to go outside to the shower. shower I don't know if you noticed I took the key off of this and I put a manual lock on more convenient for me so turn the cold on until you have pink coming out turn the hot on you're good to go
Next up is the low point drains again. Just come down here and turn them so they're straight down vertical instead of horizontal until you see pink coming out and then close them up. Sorry, this is kind of weird. I gotta do this in one take. I don't have anything to edit with. So, what do I got left here? You can pause the video here if you wanna read this, just some notes I wrote down. So, okay, yep. So when you do this, you're pushing fresh water out of the lines to replace it with antifreeze. So you've got some fresh water in your black and gray tanks just because of the way it works. If it's convenient, you can dump them out, go to a, a dump station and open your valves, let the water out, um, or just add enough RV antifreeze accordingly so that water wouldn't freeze. So at this point then you would usually, um, I would say most people have three quarters of a jug left in a 171 or similar unit. Um, or maybe they have a full jug left. And I just take and divide that between the black and the gray tank. So if there's a gallon left, put a half gallon in each. That's just what I prefer. It's not, uh, probably not necessary, but that's what I like. So. You should have it all set now. If I have forgotten anything, let me know. There you have it. Winterizing the J Feather Micro 171BH. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions or need any more information. I'm happy to provide it.